in the interview with Rock Bottom, yeah, Mick Box, legendary guitar player of legendary band Uriah Heep founder and yeah. was the Gilbrook drummer for Uriah Heep for about 12 years. Almost. Next yeah, 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 yeah. Get in there. <laughs> so you are on tour, it's a Living the Dream tour. So how is the run of the tour and how is the new material of Living the Dream accepted by the audience? Well, first and foremost, I think once the album released, um, it was, it was accepted by the media and the fans alike as being a great album. So, so that was all good. And so now we've brought some of those songs into the live show. It's been going down really well, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's, you know, they're sitting beside the classics very, very nicely. The yeah. people, people are given the same reaction as they do to the new songs to the classics. So it's all good, yeah. Because that's a hard task you did. We have 24 studio albums, so it's a hard task to bring the material from the 70s one song is from the 80s and six new songs, so how hard is it to create the right set list? Well, it's, 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 um, it's a difficult task, but it's, it's, uh, obviously it's not insurmountable because we come up with that set list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think the, the point is, you know, we, 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 we play in 61 countries around the world, so we... Okay, and okay. That, that's the well other. Does the album title Living the Dream refer on your careers as rock legends? Or? I think it partly does, yeah. You know, it's a title I had for a long, long while. Um, in my lyric book. And um, I thought it would be a very strong title for the band because, you know, we've been doing this now for 48 years, so we are in fact living the dream, you know, because, you know, to be playing in a rock band and a chapter of the world like we do, you can only be living the dream. Of course. and. This album sounds fresh and modern, but it sounds like heap. In one way, it's very modern, but or do you realize the uh, yeah, balance between tradition and modernity when recording an album? I think we, we, we decided on, on the producer, Joe Rushton, for a number of reasons. One of them is that um, the other bands we heard he produced, like the Winery Dogs and Stone Sour and Anthrax and all those bands, Basically, what he did with those bands is he, he made them sound really fresh, but kept their identity. And that was very important for you, right? He, to keep his yeah. identity, but to have a fresh sound. And he brought all the separation to the and instruments mm -hmm. and stuff that we were looking for um, that, that, that harnessed that. Because, you know, there's what the, the, the art of is, is to get the separation of each instrument, but also that it gels as one. Yeah, yeah. The art is that <laughs> gelling process. And he does it. Yeah very very well you know and and, and and yeah I agree with you you know he kept the heritage of the band and, and he's made it really fresh yeah of course and I guess you recorded the album between the various legs of the outsider tour or did you do it in one one period of time because I mean, you have no we, we, we went in the studio in January this year um, a place called Chapel Studios up in Link, Lincolnshire which is in the countryside so there's no diversions other than the make music and we, we recorded the whole thing in 19 days. Oh yeah, 19 days. Yep, oh, well, as well. a band in the studio playing live. Yeah. Really playing live, not as yeah. a... No, nice no, 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 no. One yeah. track at a time. And, and cool. so, so, sometimes um, we did the music click track, did we? No. You know, because we like just... Like the went, old days. Yeah, like the old days. Like cool, it, cool. Yeah. And I think that's what comes through in the tracks. Yes, of course. and. But my favourites are Grace by Heaven, Living the Dream and Knocking at My Door. So what are your favourite tracks or can't you name favourite tracks or for... Too difficult. For me it's too early, way too early, you know. I can't even listen to the album as a fan yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're still listening to it as the musicians, musicians that made that music, you of know. Of course. Uh, but you know, eight months down the line I'll hear a track in a, in a, in a, in a club somewhere or on a jukebox or something and go, oh that sounds great, you know. And, and, and I can listen to it in that way, but right now there's no favourites. But saying that, we've chosen six of those songs to go on the stage and they all sound really good, so... Yeah. The song Water's Flowing sounds a little bit different to the other song. It's not a typical Uriah Heep song. So would you agree or and what's behind this song musically and lyrically? We, we, tend, we tend to always have an acoustic song somewhere on the line on, on any one album. And um, when I've written what was flowing, with Phil, we, we kind of felt that we, we, 
that fit the bill, you know, because if you keep going with all that energy all the time, you need to come down and then come back with more energy. So it, it added to the dynamic of the running order of the album. Mm -hmm. I guess so this current lineup seems very stable and it's a long lasting lineup. Um, so, what you say, is it the best lineup you ever played with, or how would you see it? Because such a stable. I don't long think you could ever say favourites and best ofs and all that. I think this is where we are right now, and we're in a band that is um, firing on all five cylinders, that is very creative, very forward thinking, and and it's a joy to be playing with the band on stage and in the studio, so it can't get any better than that. And can every musician contribute his musical parts to the music, or is it just your and um, yeah, um, from, uh, from your um, keyboard well, Generally, the writing falls to Phil, Phil and yeah, the keyboard player yeah. and myself. Um, but, you know, we, we bring the embryo of the songs in, and, and people get involved in the arrangements and stuff, and, and, and uh, I mean, Rusk came came on board with a lot of great ideas on this album to change this and change that. You know, from his perspective, sitting there playing the drums. You know, yeah, um, yeah. let's not use this straight four four fill. Let's let's try this. You know, and uh, and, and once you do that, you iron it all out and it all comes together. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, and so it's yeah your current tour 2018 2019 living the dream, but after 2019. Your 50 years anniversary is approaching. Are, ya, are there any plans for an anniversary tour or special event? What do you see? Um, to be honest, because we're so immersed in, in the promotion of the album, it's so new at the moment, um, we haven't really given it a lot of thought. But of course, getting to the 50th anniversary is a very special moment. So uh, a long life's way, we will think, what about this? What about that? What about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Then phone our management and they'll say, yes, we can do this, we can't do that. And, and, and there'll be something happening along the line because it's too. It, not many bands make no, 50 no, years. No, 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 no. Yeah. And, and not many bands make 50 years and still forward thinking and still writing new songs, and that's the yeah, important thing, yeah, I think, with yeah. him. And I had any ideas to bring former musicians into the band for this event or special 50 years anniversary? Or we what? haven't given it a thought, mate. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. okay. We, we tend to try, I mean, as we've achieved what we've achieved. Um, with this lineup over the the, um, the period that we've been together, um, we, we feel that looking back sometimes can be a real milestone around your neck, uh, and and it's something that we're not keen to keep keep looking back all the time. No, no, no. You know, we, we, we of course we're very proud of the songs and, and with the attention to the songs, but looking back and bring this and doing this and do this, it, it just doesn't appeal to us anymore <laughs> because we're still moving forward. If we were just if we just went out and played all the old songs and didn't really have the passion we have now and just played them and made it a job, then maybe we'd look at those other mm -hmm. ideas. But we're we're too mm -hmm. forward thinking. Of course. And will it be the world tour? This current tour? Will you play or uh, America every, and every tour is a world tour. We never stop. Always. You know? yeah, yeah. We play <laughs> sixty one countries, so you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned it before, of course. And yeah. How would you see your fans today? Um, yeah, about nearly 50 years or so, the age structure of your fans. Are there fans from your beginnings and maybe newer fans? Uh, yeah, so we, you pick, see we pick up fans you know, all the time. You know, we, we get lots of young fans. We've got the fans that have stayed with us. We've got fans that have grown with us. We've got fans that left left us, got married, had kids, then they, um, the kids left home and now they come to concerts yeah, again, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's many, many, many different ways, you know, but for, for us, for Uriah Heap, we're tapping into a very young audience at times and, and, yeah. and that's that's where we, 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 we're, we're most happiest. Yeah, and one thing, it's refers on your first album because it's for a, a German guy with broken school English, what means the first title? Very heavy, very humble, without written without age. Is there, is there something behind it? What, what's behind this diction? Uh, 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 the picture or the, or the no, no, the, the, the title. The, you the, left the, the age. Well, the word, the word, the age, word. humble and heavy and. Ah, well, that's quite simple. Um, the name you're right, as you know, came from Double Copperfield, which was written by great novelist Charles Dickens and one of his characters in David Copperfield was Uriah Heep yeah. and one of the sayings of Uriah Heep, the character, was very heavy, very humble, very humble, very humble. Oh, very yes. humble. <laughs> so we put the very heavy with it 
to depict what our music was all about. There's a very, very, um, a very powerful side to your eye, but equally powerful is an acoustic side to your eye. And so, very heavy, you say, would be Gypsy off the first album. Very humble would probably be Come Away Melinda. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, Plus the humble, when you're saying about losing the H, it's just a slang. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the thing they did in those old Dickensian days, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a very, it's, it's from the more the east end of London. The east end of London, London. Cockney. Ah, yeah, Cockney. That, that Cockney accent, it's right. yeah, yeah. We, t we tend to drop the H's on certain words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not quite sure if it's right, but what is the reason that your name is not mentioned very often compared to a guitar hero? For example, it's often named Tony Iommi, Richie Blackmore. Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, but it's not good that your name is not mentioned so often. I guess you well, are a guitar hero. It's, it's right? not anything that worries me at all. You know, uh, I've always seen uh, I'm my own my own competition. Yeah, yeah. I don't, we don't worry about what other people do. You know, and and, and so I'm quite comfortable with that. Yeah, of um, course. And I, and I think that's that's a good way of looking at it. You know. How people perceive you is, is how they perceive you. You can't, yeah, make, yeah, yeah. you can't make them perceive you any differently, you know. But, you know, you yeah. hope that you get through to a lot of people and, and you connect yeah. with people. I get many, 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 many stories of people coming up to me and thanking my hand and saying, look, I saw you play in the yeah. year 1972 and you, your concert made me want to play guitar and I yeah, my, yeah, own, yeah, yeah. my own band and stuff like that. So, so there's many rewards along the way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you compare the music scene of the 1970s and the music scene of today, so where do you see the, the difference? What is better and what is worse, in your opinion? Um, probably you need about three days to answer that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the world's a different place. You know, it's not just music. You know, the world's a different place. The 70s was a lot different to what, what it is today in, in, in 2018. Um, in every respect, you know, with the technological stuff, um, you know, how things advance, some of it's good, some of it's bad, the internet's good, and it's bad, you know, mm. there's, there's good and bad with all of it, you know. Um, the only uh, the plus that I really see is that the immediacy of things mm. um, is very quick now. Um, but, on the downside, you know, it's also Heart, some heart of the soul has gone out of the business because you do everything on a computer button with one yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah. You, you buy it, it's there. You delete <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. it's there. You know, it's it's just the one button stuff. So it's it's um, so there's not the same passion and romanticism and love mm -hmm. for music that that you know that there used to be there. I think because of the amount of diversions that happen today as opposed to back then. Back then it was only football, music and fashion. Yeah, yeah. And now all these things you can do more on your iPhone. You yeah. Know, so, so the diversions for people are immense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's harder to sell records. And not, and today you have the album to promote your tour and 20 years ago or 30 years ago it was different. Yeah, well, you know, you used to make money off of records, you know, and that kept you alive. You used to make money off of songwriting, that kept <laughs> you alive. But nowadays, people download, download everything for free. Yeah. And, and, you know, what that does, it doesn't really help the business because, you know, we go in the studio um, with our, our record company and we, we spend a ridiculous amount of money to make the maximum product that we want uh, and, and something we'd be proud of. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, and then people are going to listen to it on MP3s. Yeah, the thing is, is they're actually stealing your work. Yeah. Because that's your work and they get it for free. Yeah. Other people's work you have to pay for. Yeah. So it makes it harder. So we have to tour a lot more mm -hmm. to then get some money back to make a living. And then the downside of that is that everyone's on the road. So you have to yeah. have something special to be on the road. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had a dream that I, I've got two boys. I had a dream that, you know, over 48 years, or more, I'll be writing songs and I can leave the publishing to my sons to, to help them get through life in whatever way they want to do that. It doesn't exist anymore. It's oh, yeah. all that's been taken away from me. You know, and I've been stripped of that income. So there's two ways to look at it. When I've known people that particular instance is destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm one of these people that I'm still doing something I love. I'm still passionate about what I do. So there is good good yeah. to it too, yeah. And I think what you have to do in today's market is embrace it and find your own niche in it. Um, otherwise it will swallow you up. Yeah, okay. 
Are there any things left out, things you want to mention to your fans? Um, well, as always, you know, I want to thank them for everything, you know, because without them, where would we be, you know? Um, you know, fan, fans are great. I mean, we have a great relationship with our fans, don't we? We've, mm. we've got a really great mm -hmm. fan base, all, you know, worldwide, so we're, we, we have a good communication with them, a good relationship with them, and long may that continue, because, you know, your eye heap's going to continue, and we hope the yeah. fanship will continue, and we hope all of it just grows and grows and grows. Of course. Yeah. Mick, Russell, thank you very much for this nice and no great show and golden platinum records, sold out concerts, everything the best. And a Happy great, days. Great anniversary in yeah, two years or one and a half year. 2020. 2020, 2020 beginning of. 2020. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you.